You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. CEO Essence with your host, Renee Marotta. Renee believes that when a woman balances her feminine intuition and connects with her inner masculine decisiveness and drive, she can excel in every aspect of her life. CEO Essence is about compassionate leadership. So now, please welcome the host of CEO Essence, Renee Marotta. Good evening. This is Renee Murata with uh, CEO Essence, and we're live on BBM Global Network TuneIn Radio. Last week, I had the pleasure, very distinct pleasure, of visiting with Jackie Rockwell about budgets. And so after talking with her, I actually sat down and put into action some of the things that we discussed last week and faced that demon of dealing with budgets in my home life. While I have budgets at work and I deal with budgets at work, somehow putting a budget together at home was hmm, a challenge for me. I always had the excuse of, well, it's in my head or it just seems so unnecessary to do that for home life or I don't know what my excuses were. I had a number of them. Anyway, I actually did it. I sat down, I looked at it, I put everything down on a piece of paper, uh, actually a spreadsheet, Excel spreadsheet. I can thank Janet, uh, my marketing director for that. She's the queen of them. And so I sat down and put them all on this nice, lovely spreadsheet. And then I started identifying areas where I could remove some of the debt. Like Jackie commented last week about the fact that uh, subscriptions are often an area where people have all kinds of subscriptions they don't necessarily look at or utilize or benefit from those subscriptions. So the first thing I did is say, okay, which, which ones could go away? So I did that. Then I joined her back to the kitchen challenge that she was um, running this week as we're towards the end of it now. But um, looked at my food budget for the week, looked at how I could, um, manage my food budget a little bit better and so I did that and I've been participating in I I challenged my daughter to it it was a lot it's been a lot of fun we're having a good time with it and uh, you know just kind of started playing with it a little bit have this nice little chart that she suggested we put on the wall that we can cross things out so when the subscriptions went away we crossed them out talk to my husband talk to the kids about budgets actually put things in action now as I was doing this I got to thinking about where else can I utilize some of this information right so we were talking about it and specifically around money in our home life and areas that would benefit from that also include time and energy when you apply the same concepts to creating a budget for your money to your time you can actually start to kind of um, categorize things in a way that you're, you can apply the same principles. So that's what I started doing this week. I'm, um, I've always been very, very good about budgeting my time, but I actually started writing it down. I started 
looking at areas where I leak time or leak energy, just the same way that I was leaking money, you know, going down and getting that cappuccino a couple times a week, for example, are a way that I leak money. But it's also a way where I leak time. And so I, I started applying these principles and looking at them and, and really kind of, um, I don't know, really facing the demons, facing the, the challenges, facing the, um, those areas of my life that I didn't really want to look at. So I, as I started to realize that this budgeting, con- this concept of a budget is really a tool, it was, not, it was far less painful to look at it when I was budgeting my time as well. So I, I started, um, you know, kind of comparing the concept of time management to the idea of budgeting my time. And while there are some similarities, there are also some dis- similarities. So some similarities of time management are the way you use your time is a good way of time management. However, budgeting time might be an area where you like, okay, I have X amount of time because I identified it in my time management. How am I going to cut out some of those extraneous hours that or minutes even, sometimes it's just minutes, that will make my time more beneficial and I can actually then put in blocks of time and make a budget, a budget for my time. So I sat down I, and I'm, I'm very systematic when I do things like this. I, I, I set aside a, t- a, a block of time to actually do this, which um, my husband thought I was a little crazy. Maybe I am, but uh, it's okay. And so I set aside a block of time and said, okay, I really need to take a look at my time. I need to build a budget for my time because I actually run more than one business. I have uh, risk integrity, safety knowledge that utilizes a significant amount of my time. I have CEO essence that also utilizes a significant amount of time. I'm finishing up a certification in the law of attraction coaching through the quantum success coaching Academy that requires a certain amount of my time. I'm also taking a light body course that requires a certain amount of my time. I'm working with a a group of women. We're putting together um, a a, a YouTube channel. I guess you'll, we'll put start there and around compassionate conversations. And that requires a significant amount of my time. I'm a mother. I'm a wife. I have just my own time. So, you know, I have all of these chunks of time that require my energy for someone else. Oh, and I'm working with somebody else. We're putting together a course on managing money. So a lot going on all of the time. And so time management is very important, as is budgeting my time. So I sat down and really started looking at where are some different ways that I can um budget. And as I was doing this with money, I was recognizing the areas that I, I needed to clean up my energy around money. So I'm going to go back to what prompted all of this, right? In the book, Energy of Money, um, author Maria Nemeth talks about, a, she talks a lot about cleaning up our energy around money. For example, if we have any um, unpaid debts or pay, you know paying them off, dealing with debt collectors is and negotiating lower payments really helps clean up that energy. So when I was looking at that, I was like, okay, so where am I doing the same thing with my time? Where am I kind of allowing things to? Um, where am I avoiding things? So when I sit down doing emails, I now allot myself a certain amount of time. So I've given myself a time budget to deal with email. 
and whether you call it time management or budgeting, it really, I guess it really doesn't matter at the end of the day. But uh, um, uh, we're already to a break. When we come back, I'll talk about some of the different ways that I have identified areas where I can shore up some of my time and energy. This is Renee Murata with CEO Essence, and we're on BBM Global Network and tune in radio. We'll be back in a moment. French Rastafarian baker Chef Hugues Mott is a fourth generation baker and has worked in 11 countries across three continents. Born in Mulhouse, France, he began apprenticing in his father's bakery at age 12 and has devoted his life to learning cultures of the world from inside kitchens across the globe. He also teaches traditional French baking by hosting demonstrations and classes, and his passion for baking is reflected in his delicious confections. With a deep respect for discipline and his Rastafarian way of life, Chef Uvmat exemplifies commitment to tradition and culture in a global world. Traveling extensively and combining a myriad of flavors into his recipes, Chef Uvmat brings a unique approach to baking. To read more about the French Rastafarian baker, visit www.frenchchefoug.com. That's H-U-G-U-E-S. Bon appétit and bless up. According to the American Nurses Association, there are approximately three and a half to four million nurses in the United States. So where do all these nurses work? What kind of roles do they have? What kind of education and training help to prepare them for so many different settings? What kind of impact do nurses have on patient outcomes? The World Health Organization has announced that 2020 will be the year of the nurse, honoring the 200th birth anniversary of Florence Nightingale, an international initiative called Nurse Nursing Now is underway to raise the profile of nursing. The National Academy of Medicine has convened a committee to create the future of nursing 2020 to 2030 that will focus on how the nursing profession can create a culture of health, reduce health disparities, and improve the health and well-being of the U.S. population. Learn more and join Joyce Batchelor on All About Nursing, Wednesdays from 7 to 8 p.m. Central Standard Time on the BBM Global Network. All right, so we're back and we're talking about budgeting our time and uh, time management concepts. Um, Before I start kind of looking at some of the various ways that I have found to manage my time or budget my time, if you will, um, I wanted to address really why. So when I'm because I work and have so many things going on, I, I it's very easy for me to get sucked into a project. It's very easy for me to get working on one of the different tasks that's going on and forget about the other things or push them aside or get caught up in a task ask that's really not an imperative to achieve my overall goal. Okay. So I have some overall goals that I have set for myself and, and I, I really try to stay focused on those. And so each day before I get started, I, um, I set up a list of priorities of what my goals are for the day. And I have like subsets for my goals and I really work towards achieving those six things. And once I've achieved those six things, then I start working on the various tasks that are the more mundane kinds of things. And this is something that I have, I've been actually doing for some time. I, I actually, I, I used to do only three priority things and recently move that up to six because I have so much else going on. And so as I was recognizing that I was leaking so much time and energy in my life in different arenas, I had to really start to look at were my tasks that I, my goals, those things that I was working out, were they really tasks or were they really goals? So I sat down, that was a Actually, the very first thing that I did is do that. What were my goals? What are my goals? What are my life goals or even my goals for this this month, 
this the rest of this year? What are my goals for first quarter next year? And goals really are things that you feel good about. Now, once I've identified my goals, I can I, I can identify some sub goals or sub tasks, subsets of those goals. And then from there, I can assign an allotted time or a, a budgeted amount of time for each one of those those um, sub goals, sub tasks. And once I had done that, then I was able to really sit down and go, okay, so I've now allotted six of my eight hours working hours to achieving my goals, right? I've, I've sat down and I've said, okay, I'm going to spend this amount of time putting together material for risk, integrity, safety, knowledge, this amount of time working on material for, um, CEO essence and the feminine leadership course that I'm just finishing up, or I'm going to, going to allow myself this amount of time for my um, compassionate conversations and putting that material together, pulling segments out because we're getting ready to launch that or a Reiki course that I'm finishing up with my husband um, putting together. How much time am I going to allow myself towards that given the fact that we're not going to launch until February. So, so different things that I'm working on, I, I budgeted based on priorities. And I, then I can go and say, okay, email sucks a lot of my time, right? It just, it becomes a, a time suck if we're not careful, because if we leave the email open, then it's easy for us to go into reaction mode. You'll, you'll see an email pop up. I ne- even when my email is open, I don't have notifications on. And the reason for that is because it becomes a distraction for me. It becomes a, an energy vampire, a gap, an energy gap. I call it an energy vampire because that's what it ends up doing. It just ends up sucking the time and that is better spent on other things. I instead have an email that lets everybody know, hey, look, I check my email twice a day um, from this time to this time. If I don't get, you know, I will get back to you in the next 24 hours. I think it says 24 hours, it might say 48. But anyway, I let people know, right? And people that, that recognize that um, if it's an emergency, they're going to call me. They'll, they'll look to see if I'm on Skype, they'll Skype me. If I'm not on Skype, they'll call me. And so this is how I manage that, that um, time suck from email. I give myself a block of time that I'm going to use it. I budget this a lot, this amount of time. Then uh, some of the other areas where I've budgeted time would be um, I'll, when I set it an agenda for a meeting. Now, there are some meetings that are more open-ended than others, but when I set an agenda for a meeting, I'll say, okay, I have an hour, and I give it an hour. And I'm, I'm pretty good about it. Um, with Janet, she and I will kind of have a um, an open-ended, a little bit more open-ended amount of time between us because she and I work together on so many different things. Uh, So we might give ourselves a two hour kind of window and of which we'll take maybe an hour and a half. Sometimes we take the full two hours, but um, we stay pretty on point going through everything. I'll have my agenda. She kind of has her agendas. We might have our agenda that we're working on and we'll go through the different things. Okay. We need to talk about this now. Okay. We need to talk about this now. And we're pretty good about staying on point. When I'm having a company-wide meeting, I'm very, very rigid about the time. And I do that because I have very limited time. And it becomes very easy to blow my time budget if I'm not careful. Um, There are a couple of clients that are really good about blowing a time budget. (laughs) So I have to be aware when I'm dealing with certain clients that I have to... uh, either be very clear up front, this is how much time I have, or I have to allow myself a certain amount of time. So I budget accordingly, right? I budget myself accordingly. 
So uh, we're again to another break, and we'll be back in a moment. This is Renee Murata with CEO Essence. We're on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Be right back. Do you ever wonder why certain things are happening in your life? How to start a business or a new direction? Need answers? Astrologer Bonnie Perbula can help you reveal your true self and gain strength and focus so you can achieve greater joy and success. Working with a natal birth date, time, and location, Bonnie brings out qualities to aid you in getting the best from your life. She can help you unlock dormant traits to bring you greater awareness. Bonnie also conducts public speaking engagements to educate a Inspiring astrologers on their journey to the stars. A gifted artist, Bonnie bridges her talents and recently launched a line of Astro Bears, uniquely created in colors of individuals' astrology charts. She also makes one of a kind necklaces of crystal beads and woven thread. To learn more about the world of Bonnie Prabula, go to bonniegprabula.com. And for astrology consulting, visit astrologyconsultants.com or call or email her at 808 526 1536 or Bonnie G gp at aol.com baby boomers face many challenges and sometimes you have to reinvent yourself in order to stay on top sharon ball nurse practitioner and christian life and wellness coach can help sharon has written a book called reinventing yourself today and it can help you through the pangs of changing the course of your life whether you are looking to stay on track with new goals a sensible program to help you shed unwanted pounds or a full kick butt life reinvention sharon can work with you Follow your passions and live each day according to your dreams and free yourself from the expectations of others. Sharon comes from the heart and shares her own personal journey to reinvention with her clients. Other self-help books inspired her, but few gave her the steps to improve her life, so she created a plan that works. Stress no more. Let Sharon Ball open the door. Sign up for a complimentary life reinvention consultation today at tinyurl.com forward slash get started for free for more of what life has in store. All right, we're back on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. This is CEO Essence, and I'm your host, Renee. We're talking about time management, budgeting of our time. And uh, I wanted to kind of come back to some of the interrelationships between the concept of budgeting, right? If we're, if we're avoiding talking to a particular client, what are we avoiding in other parts of our life? If we're avoiding dealing with a debt collector, where are we avoiding that um, person that we don't want to deal with or a conversation that we don't want to address? What, what are we, what is it that we're trying to, to um, bury our heads a little bit? You know, maybe you have an employee that you need to deal with there. There's, they're a, there's a challenge or um, an opportunity for improvement and you haven't quite figured out how you're going to turn that into a positive when really the, maybe it's about time to make the decision to let that person go. Are you not tuning into your heart space? You might stop and ask yourself what, what, where are you feeling the energy of the situation that is bringing all of this up. If you're not budgeting your time, if you're not budgeting your energy, if you're not budgeting your money, where are you feeling the different energies of these kinds of challenges and these issues? For me, when I, when I look at, for example, um, the fact that I didn't have my my home life budget kind of set. That was one of those things that whenever I thought about it, it would live in my gut. I was just like, Oh, I have to deal with this again. And I wasn't dealing with it. And by putting that together, when I sat down and really addressed it, having the conversation with Jackie last week was fabulous because it really, it, it reminded me it's a tool and it reminded me this is an energy gap and this is a, um, an energy time suck for me every time I, I wouldn't address it. I was, I was reacting. I was living in fear of something. I don't know what, because it's not like it's a bad situation. It's just something that I hadn't dealt with. But then I turn around and I start looking at my budgeting of my time. And I recognize that I have some energy gaps there, some time sucks that are happening. The email thing was kind of starting to slack a little bit more than normal. I, I was not um, 
being very intentional about my time. It's very difficult for me. I live in Italy, <laughs> so I have this marvelous view outside my window. It's very easy for me to say, oh, I think I'll just wander on downtown because we grocery shop, we walk to the grocery store, we walk home. So it's really easy to walk downtown, decide, oh, I'm going to stop and have a cappuccino. Hey, it's no big deal. I'm, you know, we'll stop and get the kids on the way back and we'll come on home and I'll put a little bit of time in there. And then before I know it, I've lost an hour of my time. So I was avoiding dealing with the fact that I was not being deliberate with my time. I was not budgeting it's okay to budget time to go and do that, but I wasn't budgeting my time properly or consistently. Maybe not properly is that's not the word, but consistently budgeting my time. Or what about your energy? Are you budgeting your energy appropriately or in a way that is healthy for you? So I'm going to come back to same thing I come back to multiple, multiple, multiple times. Where does this energy live in your body? For me, when I started looking at this whole thing this last week, thank you, Jackie, if you're listening right now, when I started looking at the concept of budget budgeting, not just money, I started looking at it in other areas. I started to realize that there was a tightness and I thought, Oh, why is that? What's happening? I was reacting to something, right? And it was that choice to bury my head. So once I recognized that and once I started addressing it and dealing with it and, and laying it out on paper, putting my my home budget on paper, that moved energy up into my heart space. So then I started looking at my time. I started doing the same thing with my schedule again, Things had started, I had added a couple of projects and I had not gone back and revisited my budget of time. And so time was slipping. And so by going back and doing that, some of that energy that was living down in my, my gut moved back up into my heart space and I was able to go, oh, okay, feeling really good about this. Well, then when I started working on things the other day, I guess it was yesterday, actually, where I was working on some things that that I had budgeted for time. I realized that (sighs) I I was back in reaction mode. And so I I sat down and I had to really look at why was I in reaction mode? What was causing me to be in reaction mode? Because this this, this was one of my priorities. This was one of those six items that I had listed. And I realized that what was happening was that it was a task, not a goal. Now, the difference between a task and a goal, a task is something that gives you relief, needs to be done, absolutely, but it wasn't one of my goals. And so my priorities must be, for me, my goals. And then I can move things into a task after that. So I was leaking energy by focusing on things that had to be done as opposed to things that made me feel good, that provided impact, that moved me towards my goals. Now, my goals, I give myself two hours of my day every day to work towards my goals. That's uh, that's a budgeted time for me. My goals are to complete the courses that I have that I'm working on putting together or working on completing my certification or, you know, whatever I have. I actually have several goals. So by giving myself two hours a day to work towards my goals, making those my priority in the day, I start my day with that. Then it sets the tone for my entire day. It's, it sets me in a forward trajectory that feels good. And by being in an energy that where I feel good, then everything flows very easily from there. So we're to another break. 
already. It always takes me by surprise. It shouldn't by now, but it does. So um, this is Renee with CEO Essence. We're on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. We'll be right back. Mike Zorick, a three-time California state champion in Greco-Roman wrestling at 114 pounds. Mike, blind since birth, was born in Hartford, Connecticut. He was a six-time national placer, including two seconds, two-thirds, and two-fourths. He also won the Veterans Folk Style Wrestling twice at 152 pounds. In all these tournaments, he was the only blind competitor. Nancy Zorick, a creative spirit whose talents have taken her to the stage and into galleries and exhibitions in several states. Her father, a commercial artist who shared his instruments with his daughter and helped her fine-tune her natural abilities, influenced her decision to follow in his footsteps. Ms. Zorick has enjoyed a fruitful career doing what she loves. Listen Saturday mornings at 12 Eastern for The Nancy and Mike Show for heartwarming stories and interesting talk on the B. BBM Global Network. Horses, mystical, present, past, and future, all in one. Wild, free, domestic, and healing for everyone. Betty Hames knows this and has put her horses to good use with Nature Connect Equine Coaching. Her mission is to help people affected by the loss of hope and trust in their lives and to rediscover the wonders of nature through nature-connected learning so they can rebuild their lives and live peacefully with newfound hope, trust, and joy. Betty Hames is also a certified elite life coach, a Washington State certified counselor, and chemical dependency professional. She is passionate about partnering nature with healing, and through horses, she sees amazing results and transformation in lives that might have otherwise been lost. Call 509-830-9225 and visit her at HamesLifeCoaching.com. Hold your horses. You're in for the ride of your life. All right. So we've returned. This is Renee with CEO Essence, and we're on BBM Global Network. Tune in radio. And we're... We, we're, we're looking at time management, budgeting of time, money, energy, and really kind of how they they are interrelated and how we can really understand whether or not we're doing something that that is right for us based on does it live in the heart space or does it live in reaction mode, right? So... For me, I really started paying attention to that this week. I really made a concerted effort to be very intentional about my decisions and around how I spend my time. Now, I've always been very deliberate around other kinds of decisions, but this was a different concept for me. And so I wanted to share it while I was still still fresh in my head that this this idea of really being deliberate and really tuning into, did it feel good to be deliberate about this segment of my day? Did it feel good to be deliberate about this segment of my day? Now, I don't know how many of you listen to Esther Abram Hicks, but Abram talks about um, segmenting and being deliberate with our day. And, you know, I, I had done that. I spent some time with that as part of my um, law of attraction qualifications that I have to, um, to understand the different processes, but I hadn't done so in such a way where I really was tuning into, does it feel good to me to stop and take that phone call? Does it feel good to me to break into the budgeted time that I have for this thing here. I had to work on some reports, for example, which is never my favorite thing to do. Um, in fact, it's my, my favorite thing to hand to someone else, by the way. Um, but in this particular case, I'm working on these reports. And so when um, a call came in, it was like, do I want to interrupt this and thus delay working on this report? Or do I want to allow the voicemail to pick it up? And so I started really paying attention to that and being very deliberate about that and being very intentional about when I break up my time and being intentional about staying with the budgeted time that I had for certain things. So if I said, okay, I'm going to spend two hours on this 
then I would pay attention, give myself two hours. Then I would take my 10 minute break or whatever it was and go and come back and do something else. So I was very deliberate about that. And I found that I got a whole lot more accomplished. Now, maybe that's no surprise to some of you, but uh, it was for me considering how, uh, how particular I am about how I structure my day anyway. And uh, yes, okay, I live in Italy and I, I allow myself that time suck, but I didn't realize how much, how much I had allowed my time to get off track or my energy. So, uh, so much time was spent being upset about or being not upset. That's really not the word that I should use, but not living in my heart space, how much time I was in reaction mode, dealing with the emails, dealing with the, this, dealing with the, that. And, and while it, it was not something that, um, took me down the rabbit trail for, of anxiety, it was still something that took me down a rabbit trail. And I realized how much stress that was causing in my life. Now, Stress is a funny thing. Stress can be a pull your hair out anxiety kind of stress or stress can just simply be a, I just am not getting things accomplished. And that can be very frustrating without being detrimental to one's mind mindset. However, I realized by being really deliberate with my time, and being very deliberate with the, how I felt about the time that I was um, spending on certain things that I was accomplishing more. And that felt great. So then I started looking at where else could I apply this, right? Where else can I apply this concept of budgeting? And, um, <laughs> You know, I starting it's it started like this crazy. Um, I'm I'm really looking for ways of how do I budget different things. So I'm I am a person who likes to continue to learn new things. I'm always I'm always saying I just finished my last class today for my quantum success coaching academy law of attraction uh, certification now i just have to take the test um so continued education is something that i've always 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 made a priority in my life I've made it a priority in risk. I um, encourage all of the people that I work with to continue to educate themselves. I've made it a priority with how I deal with my clients. You know, I um, provide them information on a routine basis. I have a series of webinars that I'm just finishing up. I just, I've delivered two out of three um, <clears throat> to a client excuse me, getting ready to do a, doing the series a couple more times. So, um, how much of my time now am I going to budget to continued education? So now I've not only all my different projects, my work, my this, my that, but how much is it, how much is it worth to me to do this continued education and invest in continued education for all of my employees. So now I have to look at the budget again, right? So I have to go back to the monetary budget to say, okay, what kind of budget do I have? How much time am I going to allot them or put in the budget both monetarily and time-wise and take a look at that? And that's something I'm going to have to talk to my marketing director about how much time can I give each person for continued education and then we have to look at what kind of education, what kind of budget. So everything kind of comes back full circle there as well. Everything always comes back full circle. Always. It's just a continued spiral all of the time. And we just go in, in a spiral up or a spiral down. So I prefer to go in a spiral up constantly. Uh, we're 
to another break. We'll talk about that spiraling up in just a moment. This is Renee, your host with CEO Essence, and we're on BBM Global Network, Tune In Radio. Patricia Fayweather Harlow is passionate about the environment and conserving our natural resources. She's written a five-part book series for all ages called Rock with Rodney and Party with Perky to Preserve Wildlife, which brings awareness through these vibrant characters on preserving and protecting our national parks and historic landmarks. Harlow has launched a campaign to mobilize green supporters, informing a united front against big oil, big coal, and the Keystone XL pipeline. And she addresses the controversial practice of fracking in books four and five. She's determined to bring greater awareness to the dangers of drilling and running crude oil through pipelines that cut through pristine landscapes. And she empowers readers to take action in keeping America beautiful. To learn more about Patricia Fayweather Harlow and to purchase her books, visit www.patricia-fayweather-harlow.com. That's F-A-Y-E-R-W-E-A-T-H-E-R. And play your part in preserving the landscape that we all share and love. Animal lover, author, artist, and public speaker, Patricia Daly Life is a renaissance woman in her own right. A lover of animals from a young age, Patricia lives on a farm in Virginia and has rescued neglected thoroughbred horses, keeping them or finding them safe havens. She is also a published author, and her books document real-life experiences that she shares in her passionate stories, taking the reader around the world in a colorful kaleidoscope of life. An accomplished artist, Patricia Daly Life's oil paintings feature animals, portraits, stills, nature, and abstract, and she allows the brush to paint the image in an organic, natural way. A public speaker, Patricia is motivated to continually wonder about life and advocates for all of us to do the same and document our own unique history. To learn more about Patricia Daly Life, visit www.literarylady.com and www.patricialife.com or email her at pdlife at gmail.com. All right, so we're back. Uh, This is CEO Essence and... We're on the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. This is Renee, your host. And we were talking about spiraling, spiraling upward versus downward. When we tap into the energy that we feel when we're creating our budgets, whether we're creating a monetary budget, a time budget, or an energy budget, no matter what we're doing, we're making decisions based on how we feel. We're making decisions based on the visceral feeling that we have in our body. And I use that information when I'm doing anything. I I use that visceral information in any arena. This was just one more arena that I hadn't applied it consistently hadn't thought to apply it to the concept of creating budgets and I hadn't thought to take the concept of budget to time and energy. Um, But here I am doing it. And when I talk about, I I guess I didn't really address budgeting energy to expend on certain areas or in certain arenas. When I look at energy, budgeting energy. Um, for me, it's, it's, I have to spend so much time of my time taking care of myself. And part of taking care of myself is a continued education or a mm, meditation or just time for me. And time for me can be reading Time for me can be a walk. Time for me can be meditation. Time for me can be whatever it looks like. Now, I choose to use that a lot in continued education. And because it's so important to me, I use that with other people as well um, within my organization because it's important within the organization. So now I... Uh, as I mentioned before the break, we talk about um, budgets in a monetary time and energetic fashion within our organization. And then it, that comes full circle to decision making, right? We, we talked about decision in another show. I'm 
I'm not sure how far back, but we talked about how to make decisions. We, we look at decisions to uh, this continued education, this concept of continued education. We have to look at the budgets for time and the budgets for money to, in order to understand whether or not we can pursue certain types of continued education for each one of our employees. Some of that can be through mentoring. Some of it can be through classwork. Some of it can be through training that I provide or um, we do some cross-training. Right now, we don't have the times, and I can't ask that of anybody because we're all kind of maxed out on our time. And so I have to, I have been really looking at our time issues within the organization and asking the question, now what? Right? Um, Because I'm feeling that feeling kind of down in the gut of the time for all of us is kind of um, maxed out. And we're all struggling with that. So I was looking um, at different ways to impact time for everyone. Reports take a lot of time. Can we hire somebody to help them with reports? Is there a way that we can make doing reports more efficient to minimize that time? So time management becomes part of our budgeting of our time. It's a full, everything comes full circle. Everything comes back to um, that idea of bring of budgets. <clears throat> Budgeting, when I was talking with Jackie last week, started out with the budgeting of money. And I was really understanding, really looking at the fact that when we are avoiding something, when we're not looking at something, when we're Um, we don't want to deal with it, then it impacts every other arena of our life. And it's important for us to clean that up. Excuse me, let me get some water. If we can clean that up, if we can clean it up in any arena whether we clean it up in our money arena, whether we clean it up in our time arena, it impacts every other arena of our life. So for me, I started looking at the money arena because I was creating my home one. So then I was able to start impacting other arenas of my life, which was time and energy. With my children, I started looking at how I could help them, how I could impact their lives, how I could help them understand that this concept of budget is important. So for my son, who's 12, he was really struggling with how to, how to budget his time. He gets home from school at 1.20 in the afternoon. Well, he gets out of school at 1.20 in the afternoon. So he comes home and he's got two to three hours of homework every day. He wants to come home, he wants to eat lunch, he wants to play his video games, read his book. And so we sat down and we said, okay, let's create a time budget. Let's create a time budget for you. Let's say you're going to allow yourself this amount of time to play games or read a book or relax, however you want to relax, take your dog for a walk, whatever it is. And then you're going to create a, you're going to spend this amount of time studying then you're going to take another break. Then you're going to take and study some more. Now, if you have, you're going to have this kind of window, open windows so that if you have more time, more studying that needs to happen, maybe you have a test, maybe you have a special assignment that you're working on, then that can go in that slot of time, or that can become more playtime. So he sat down and he, he put his, his time budget together this week. It was really interesting to watch him work on this and get really excited about it. And he realized how efficient it 
it made it for him. So then we sat down and we created his money monetary budget as well. It was a lot of fun to help him understand what that looked like and why and how. So we're to a break. We'll be back in a moment. This is Renee with CEO Essence, and we're on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Thank you. There are artists, and then there's Alice Asmar. This award-winning artist has spent her entire life devoted to her artistic pursuits and has had a lifelong fascination with American Indians of the southwestern United States. Her book, Dance to the Great Spirit, showcases her drawings and paintings inspired by sacred rituals of the Pueblo Indians, and four of her lithographs are in permanent collection at the National Museum of American History in the Smithsonian Institution in Washington, D.C. She is one of four artists in the United States to win a Woolley Fellowship for study in Paris at Les Colday Beaux Arts and has been featured in numerous publications. She's exhibited at the world's most prestigious museums and galleries and recently won a 20 year service award from the Burbank City Council and the inaugural art competition of the Foundation of the United States in Paris. Visit www.asmarart.com, www.aliceasmarinternational.com, and email alice at aliceasmar at aol.com. Global Glory. That's the work of Dr. Marina McLean, COO of Global Glory, whose calling is to serve God. A first-generation British-born Londoner of Jamaican descent, Dr. McLean inherited the hunger for the Word from her father, who was a Bible teacher. Growing up, her home was filled with missionaries from the Caribbean islands and America, and she travels the world preaching the gospel. She has a Bachelor of Arts degree in theology and an honorary doctorate of divinity and Christian counseling from Friends in International Christian University. Dr. McLean is also a songwriter and recording artist, and her songs are written during summits and conferences in the presence of God. She's recorded three worship albums to date and is in ministry for 28 years alongside her husband, Dr. Rennie McLean, who shares her passion. Visit www.globalglory.org or on Facebook at Global Glory. Call 866-244-5679 and feel the glory. All right, we're back. We're coming to you live on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. And you're listening to CEO Essence. Uh, I'm your host, Renee. And uh, we we started the show talking about budgeting. Um, th- we started this show today <laughs> talking about budgeting because last week we had Jackie Rockwell on the show. And when she was on the show, we were specifically talking about budgets for money. And what that led to for me this week was really creating budgets in a variety of ways within my life. And I found that by putting it down on paper, by writing things down on paper, I was able to really kind of look at ways that I could create more time and space for myself. What this did was really alleviate stress. And stress, stress, stress is... It impacts so many of us in so many different ways. It's number one killer for women, probably for men as well. Um, I don't really look at the numbers. Sorry, guys. Um, but I do, I, I am aware of how much it impacts women. And so I'm always looking for different ways to alleviate stress, alleviate it in my life and help other women in theirs. And I realize that... Uh, when I realized how much of a tool creating a budget can be, then I really started applying it in different ways and in a wide, wildly crazy amount of ways. And it's been really quite beneficial in my home. Just one week. I can't wait to see what else comes up in this next week. But in creating these budgets, I really started understanding where some of the the leaks in my time, my energy, uh, my money, um, in relationships, you know, which is energy, right? Relationships. That's if you're if you're having relationship issues, there's probably some kind of energy leak happening. 
and really started looking at how they're all interrelated and understanding that. So that was really kind of um, an eye-opening thing for me in some respects because I really thought I had a, a clear understanding of that and was really aware of all of that and that I was really working with all of that. And so I was kind of surprised. I was taken aback at how much, how unaware I was. So, yeah, it's been an interesting week in that regard. But um, that's okay. You know, I'm always learning. We're always learning, right? It's a continuous process for all of us. At least it is for me. And uh, if you're listening to the show, then it is for you too, because this is what the show is about, is learning, learning opportunities and ways that we can share and ways that we can grow. And uh, that's what CEO Essence is all about, is really helping women to step forward in their power, helping women to step forward in a way that is strong, powerful, impactful, joyful. Yeah. So CEO Essence has been in part, we've been taking part of um, compassionate conversations. That's a new thing. So I'll be sharing more with you uh, here shortly. November 1st is when we'll go live with that. Uh, pretty excited about it and a couple other things coming up. So we're at the end of the show. This is Renee Murata, your host of CEO Essence, and we're on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. We'll talk to you next week. You've been listening to CEO Essence with host Renee Murata. Being your best in life and business comes when you practice compassion, build connection, balance masculine and feminine energies, and apply self-care. Embody your CEO Essence with host Renee Murata. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.